India Company comes east. In 1600, in 1600, the East India Company acquired a charter from the ruler of England. Queen Elizabeth I, granting it the sole right to trade with the East. This meant that no other trading group in England could compete with the East India Company. With this charter, the company could venture across the oceans looking for new lands from which it could buy goods at a cheap price and carry them back to Europe to sell at higher prices. The company did not have to fear competition from other English trading companies. Mercantile trading companies in those days made profit primarily by excluding competition so that they could buy cheap and sell dear. The Royal Charter, however, could not prevent other European powers from entering the Eastern markets. By the time the first English ships sailed down the west coast of Africa, round the Cape of Good Hope and crossed the Indian Ocean, the Portuguese had already established their presence in the western coast of India and had their base in Goa. In fact, it was Vasco da Gama, a Portuguese explorer, who had discovered the sea route to India in 1498. By the early 17th century, the Dutch too were exploring the possibilities of trade in the Indian Ocean. Soon, the French traders arrived on the scene. The problem was that all the companies were interested in buying the same things. The fine qualities of cotton and silk produced in India had a big market in Europe. pepper, cloves, cardamom and cinnamon too were in great demand. Competition among the European companies inevitably pushed up the prices at which these goods could be purchased and this reduced the profits that could be earned. The only way the trading companies could flourish was by eliminating rival competitors. The urge to secure markets therefore led to fierce battles between the trading companies. Through the 17th and 18th centuries, they regularly sank each other's ships, blockaded routes and prevented rival ships 
from moving with the supplies of goods. Trade was carried on with arms and trading posts were protected through fortification. This effort to fortify settlements and carry on profitable trade also led to intense conflict with the local rulers. The company therefore found it difficult to separate trade from politics. In the next module, let us see how this happened.